So for our next presentation, uh, we've been hearing a lot about SATNOX on various different presentations, so it's time to do a SATNOX State of the Union uh, to see in depth, uh, or in the depth that is allowed in 12 minutes, um, the different parts and the progresses of the uh, network so far, and who's better than doing that from, than the person that is responsible for the development of one of those pieces of SATNOX, the SATNOX network, probably one of the most crucial pieces. So let's all welcome Freddy, Alfredos Damkalis, uh, to guide us through SATNOX and the State of the Union. So, uh, am I good? So what is SADNOX project? Uh, SADNOX project is a network of ground stations uh, based on open source hardware, software, and data. Uh, we build it uh, with uh, a modular design, or we try to be as modular as possible. And we try to automate satellite communications, receiving and maybe in the future transceiving, uh, transmitting, sorry. So, what is SADNOX project? It is, uh, it has two uh, separate parts. It's the ground station, which is mostly the uh, software and hardware that uh, uh, controls a ground station. And uh, the next part is the web uh, services and some other services uh, that uh, make the uh, connection between a single ground station and other ground stations to make a network. So let's see what we have uh, done and what we and what we have achieved the next uh, the previous year uh, on all these uh, components of SADNOX project. So we start from SADNOX client. It's the software that controls the uh, ground station. Uh, it handles uh, the communication between the ground station and the network, and uh, also performs and coordinates the observations that are scheduled to its ground station. Uh, anyone can install it from the source uh, or a Python package or uh, you can use an Ansible script in a Linux environment. Uh, our reference setup uses the Ansible script, uh, which is coming with a uh, Raspberry Pi image. Uh, last year was only for Raspberry Pi 3, but now it's ready also for Raspberry Pi 4. Last year, uh, we, did, uh, we added uh, some uh, we added this, uh, we supported the new GeoSadnox uh, scripts for having more demodulators for satellites. Uh, we, have see, uh, we have fixed, <coughs> sorry, we have uh, fixed several bugs. Uh, we uh, tried to improve the, co the code base and uh, recently, I mean the last week, <laughs> uh, we released the uh, version one. Uh, in the future, we are uh, continue uh, with the version one. Uh, we are trying to move to a new architecture of client, more modular and uh, with better uh, interfaces. So in the future, we uh, want to continue the implementation of this new architecture and also starting support uh, transmission uh, under the SADNOX comms project. Now, the uh, GEO SADNOX, uh, the GNU radio out of three module of SADNOX that uh, help us to uh, process and demodulate the received signal that we receive with the SDRs. Uh, again, the installation can be done by uh, source code, uh, by a package, Linux package, and also, again, the Ansible script. Uh, again, the reference setup uh, installs the, uh, the GeoSadnox uh, from uh, the Ansible script, which is, again, on the image of Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. 
So these are the modes that are currently supported by GeoSadnox. Uh, some of them are new, uh, so and some of them have a better performance as uh, we continuously try to improve the performance and uh, make them better in order to demodulate more data. Uh, we also moved packaging uh, to the open build service. Uh, so now we can create uh, Linux packages for several uh, distributions. And also we have added uh, GeoSOP support for uh, better compatibility with SDRs. And for the future, uh, we are going, we are currently testing some uh, improvements on uh, flow graphs performance, probably the next uh, couple of uh, weeks will be also uh, added to, uh, to the stations. Uh, we also uh, need to transition, uh, uh, go from uh, GR Osmo SDR and go to GR SOPI. Uh, again, the support of transmission under the Sadnox Comps project. Uh, it affects also the GR Sadnox project. And also uh, to add metadata uh, on the data frames coming from uh, from the flow graphs, the scripts that run. Uh, on the hardware aspect of the ground station, uh, we have the Sadnox rotator, which uh, includes the hardware and the firmware of uh, uh, the rotator. Uh, it moves, uh, the job that does is to move the directional antennas to follow the satellite when there is a pass. And there is a very detailed documentation in our wiki for, uh, for the components that someone will need to build and instruction how to build uh, the rotator. Of course, the hardware and firmware is open source. So these are the uh, characteristics of the Sadnox rotator. Uh, it can run as an azimuth elevation or XY type rotator. Uh, it, uh, uh, it has uh, 16 uh, Nm uh, continued torque on a 5 kilo antenna load. Uh, it's pointing accuracy is 1 degree. And uh, when we measure accuracy, it's going down to uh, 0.04 degrees. Uh, it supports the EasyCom uh, protocol. And it's tested and weatherproof uh, in temperatures uh, of 5 to 40 uh, Celsius degrees. It's electromagnetically sealed and wind sustained around uh, 29 to 38 kilometers per hour. So in the last year, uh, there was the release of version 3.1. Uh, there were made several fixes and improvements after uh, the extended testing that has been done. And uh, more users started using uh, this rotator uh, inside and outside the Sadnox network and the, these views uh, bring more feedback back and help us to improve the uh, the design on the uh, project. In the future, we are going to continue testing, uh, maybe in more, uh, more extreme weather conditions, and also test other antennas and what it can support. And uh, also, uh, this is not exactly for the Sandbox rotator, but uh, it. Uh, it's on the ground station uh, part, uh, the hardware. Uh, we are trying to uh, develop and update components like deplexers, amplifiers, and filters in order to improve the, uh, the reception of uh, the signals, the reception of satellites. Now, uh, we are moving to web and the other services. And we start from Sadnox network. Here is a recent map with green dots being the 
online stations and uh, Orange Dots be, be the station that are currently on testing. Uh, the network uh, allows uh, the, the management of each station and also uh, allows, allows us to schedule uh, satellites, uh, pa satellite passes over uh, the stations. And also uh, displays and uh, collect right now the observation results. Uh, currently, and on the diagram you see the online stations from uh, uh, 2018, August, uh, uh, sorry, May of uh, 2018 to today. Uh, currently, we have 220 online stations and 110 testing stations. Uh, we do almost 3,000 observations per day and we demodulate uh, 9,000 uh, data per day. Here is uh, the coverage. This was last year uh, on the last uh, OSW. And this uh, on the right is the, the coverage from the last OSW to today. Uh, also an uh, SSTV event and what uh, we managed to cover from all these events, all these orbits. And let's go to what happened last year. We factor how to the code that uh, does the scheduling. Uh, we implemented a scheduling API. Uh, we try also to, to automate the scheduling process. Uh, of course, we have done some fixes for performance and bug fixes, and also reached uh, one million observations. Uh, for, fu <laughs> <laughs> for the future, we are going to move to Python 3 and Django 2, uh, improve the API, release an API client so people that use uh, the API have all software and that will be easily uh, consume the network API. Uh, we're going to move from a waterfall image to waterfall data that will allow us to do some more accurate uh, uh, calculations and also support the transmission part as in the other projects. SatnoxDB, a crowdsource uh, uh, database for satellite and transmitters uh, and the repository of collected telemetry and payload frames. Uh, some statistics about the SatnoxDB. We uh, have several satellites and transmitters. Uh, 650 contributors collected more than 48.5 million frames from SatNox network, uh, telemetry for water, and zero satellites. Uh, the last year we moved to Python 3 and Django 2, improved the code base, and we had also, again, several fix and performance improvements. Uh, again, we are going to improve the API, release uh, an API client for the uh, SatNox DB2, uh, integrate the Metasat schema, uh, provide better statistics, and improve the automated frames validation. Uh, decoders, which are uh, a collection of Kaitai tracks that allow us to uh, describe how the satellite uh, data frames are encoded and help us to create uh, Python uh, script decoders. Uh, we have these supported decoders currently for all these satellites and more are in the way. Uh, we have added the last year new decoders, improved the code base and the infrastructure. Uh, more decoders to come and we, are going, we want to involve more people and satellite teams for this one. And last, the SATNOX dashboards, uh, which collects all the data that are decoded from the decoders and display and visualizes uh, the satellite data frames. Last year, we added uh, 
new dashboards created by the community and some satellite teams. And we know that uh, some satellite teams uh, use uh, almost daily uh, this dashboard for doing mission analysis. In the future, more dashboards are going to come and also here we won't involve more people in satellite teams to uh, start uh, to create dashboard for their satellites. I want to also uh, say a big thank you to the Sadnox community. There are many people around the world uh, building stations, visualize data, uh, uh, help with the co coding. Uh, I want to thank all of these people because without them, there, there will be not a Sadnox project. Thank you. Questions? So you mentioned you you wanted to, to transition from uh, waterfall images to waterfall data. Mm -hmm. uh, how exactly would you do that? How? How exactly would you do that? Like how would you um, let the user visualize? Yeah, right, right now the waterfall, uh, it, we collect data on the client and we, uh, we make this data uh, an image, a waterfall image, the last, that's the one we saw earlier. So now we, we don't want to create an image, but move this data with more details, with time stamps and uh, other details to the network and then visualize this data on the network side. Like, uh, if the user wanted to visualize the data, now uh, they're able to, obviously, with the image, but uh, are you planning to make, like, uh, an interactive module? Like, uh, the user can zoom in in frequency and have more resolution, or? Mm, probably, yes. I mean, we are still in the process of... Uh, thinking... Of thinking the idea okay. and how we are going to move forward with this. Yeah, and the second question uh, for uh, the waterfall data, obviously someone uh, classifies the data as uh, good observation, bad observation, and all that, right? Uh, this is obviously a lot of work. So are you, have you considered implementing machine learning algorithms to uh, automatically classify such data? Yes, mo mo uh, one of the reasons to move to the uh, data from just an image, is also this, uh, this goal to have some data to feed uh, AI uh, systems in order to probably in the future automate this process too of vetting because right now uh, it's one of the things that we don't have automated. Yeah. About. And is the data um, yeah. like is the raw data stored anywhere, like uh, in an archive, or are they like lost? Sure, sorry. Because you mentioned you were planning to move to uh, to waterfall data than just image. Uh, this data uh, for uh, all the observations that have been uh, run, uh, are they stored anywhere uh, on an archive or or not? No, the, the observation data that we have right now. Yeah, you convert it to we, an image, we, right? But we, we are not going to convert them. Yeah, but right now. But the uh, new ones will be. Yeah, but right now, are the data uh, stored anywhere for future uh, analysis instead no, of just the. No, no, it's just the image. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you hi. You you had time to prepare your questions. So. Maybe a rhetorical question. Uh, if, if you had to choose what one place where you would like to see more ground stations, uh, where would that be? Mm, everywhere. <laughs> 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 okay, let's see the map a little. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks for choosing the red color. For uh, I don't know if this, if this is a clear <laughs> map, uh, if it's visible. Okay, maybe go to the actual one. Yep. Yeah, Asia mostly, and 
Russia and China and center of the Africa and yeah, North and South Pole would be nice. Hawaii also. <laughs> Brazil, why not? That would be great. Yeah. Just, just to add, <laughs> uh, just to add some uh, one more detail that even if you want to build a station and see that oh my country has so many stations why to build one, we need more stations. We need more stations because we can uh, have the contingency to the stations and also we can do better analysis track more satellites at once, and all these uh, things. So, no problem to have more in Europe and US or in other places. Can we add a request to, for people to add cameras? <laughs> so, sorry? Can we add a request for cameras too? <laughs> okay. For orbit control. Why not, why not? <laughs> Have you conducted any of the universities that are maybe in China, Russia, or mm -hmm. in Brazil that uh, can uh, manufacture a Satnox uh, ground station uh, for a research for research projects? How, uh, Have you conducted any universities? Uh, no. The the truth is that we didn't uh, didn't hand to. Uh, universities and uh, agencies and uh, companies to build a station. All, most of uh, the stations right now are for amateurs or universities that came to us. So we didn't actively uh, do it out, but uh, probably we, we do that in the future, especially in the areas that we don't have so many stations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the budget uh, to build one is extremely low, so I think mm -hmm. any university can provide some fund yes. to do so. Thank you. But of course we are here to help anyone that wants to build a station. The community is very vibrant and... Uh, hello. Um, you mentioned um, about the uplink uh, ground stations and I'd like to ask uh, whether you have already um, uh, set a ground station for uplink uh, or testing and if you haven't, uh, how do you plan on uh, testing the uplink capability? Mm -hmm. uh, we have started testing uh, the uh, uplink uh, Dublin ground stations. Uh, still, we are in the start, in the beginning of the project, so uh, I don't have many details to <laughs> to give right now. But stay tuned on the community, and there will be more details. Thank you for your presentation. Um, you mentioned something about a new format for the waterfall data. Uh, yeah. Is this format going to include uh, actual uh, IQ data as they come from the SDR, or I are they going to be formatted in some? No, other? still will be uh, compressed data. We are still uh, debating this, how we are going to uh, to implement this. Uh, this is because uh, we need to keep the uh, the data that transfer from client to network to a minimum size because in some areas there are issues with the bandwidth, the internet bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, we're 
try to find the good trade-off between the, the size and the uh, details in the data. Hi, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, I don't know if you said it before, how much it would it cost to have like this station with an antenna? And uh, the most simple, the simplest uh, format is the a static ground station that it's cost uh, something around 100 to 120 euros. Okay. For the Raspberry Pi, the static antenna, maybe an amplifier and yeah, that's all. Like the fanciest one, <laughs> how much can it cost? The fanciest one, uh, see how much is the 25 <laughs> meter <laughs> this. <laughs> one euro. <laughs> <laughs> one euro. <laughs> okay, a, mo a most advanced setup, uh, maybe also with uh, S-band support, uh, it goes up, I don't know, 1,000 euros, 5,000. Okay. It depends on the, on the equipment that you're going to add on the uh, on the station. Uh, if you build the Sadnox rotator, it's uh, about uh, like 300 to 500, depending on the antennas and the... Uh, yeah, I think we might want to put one, a uh, new one in Tenerife. Uh, so. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should also mention all what's come with the ground station, so the, the pylon, the coffer, and so on, so maybe it's more than 1,000 euro. <laughs> okay, so don't forget. Okay. More questions? Yeah. One question more. Uh, one more? <laughs> What are the physical limits that uh, we will run into if it keeps growing like that? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, it's all of the above, right? It's storage, it's network, it's processing power. Um, so all of those are limitations. I would say that generally we say that those are good problems to have because that means that you grow, right? Um, but yeah, we are investigating solutions that are going to help us scale more in terms of infrastructure and in terms of uh, the way that we structure our data and choose what to keep. And there's good progress on that on various fronts, on the IQ, like the IQ zip project, or the ways that we pre-process and store things uh, so that we don't have to necessarily keep the raw data. Hello. Um, is there any plan uh, to make a version of uh, Sadnox for uh, something that you can leave it very far, for example, on a mountain or something like yeah, remote, the, the very remote? Sorry. There are stations, as Pierre yes. said, there are stations that are in a more extreme places, but uh, we don't have any. A plan for building uh, ourselves something like that but we are here to help anyone that are uh, that want to set up a station in a extreme weather conditions and we are here to support him and guide him if there is a need mm -hmm. Swiss Alps yes so we, we, we have a little experience with that. Uh, a part of the budget that should be maybe more in increased a little. Uh, it's possible to make remote control of the SATNOX, of course, uh, but uh, there are regulations that uh, want you to be in a, always in a position to, to shut down your, your emission. So it has to be only reception or things like that. So you have to count with regulations.
Thank you for the presentation. Uh, are you in contact with any local radio amateur groups throughout the world or in Greece uh, uh, for the yes, satellite network? Se several. Um, most of the uh, ground stations are set up from uh, amateur radio people, so some of them have uh, built their station in uh, radio amateur clubs, so we are in contact uh, this way, but not something... Uh yeah, maybe it would be like, a, like an idea to expand the network to come in contact with uh, amateur radio yeah, groups throughout sure. the world. Probably because it's easier, I think, than the university. They're more like, it's easier to build for them, like, so that's what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. One more. Last one. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to ask if you have any concern on the site security and safety. Um, there's, um, I'm a radio amateur and I listen to, you know, um, um, stations that are uh, robbed and, uh, and um, stormed, uh, stormed um, all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, you, you need to give uh, some degree of anonymity and um, maybe integrate on the hardware, for example, you know, alarm for detection of um, things being um, moved or stuff. Yeah, to be, to be honest, I haven't heard any, at least on the Sadnox network, I haven't heard any incident. But, yeah, I think that we can probably add something or anyone can contribute on such system that can help uh, protecting the stations. <laughs> Thank you.